duck hunt is a fun game. Shooting all the ducks away. I don't know where I was going with that one at all. Hello all of you little demons, Jules here for WhatCulture.com, back again with another episode of the awesomely named and awfully hosted Choose Your Own Adventure, the weekly medieval theme format where I, the crown jewels of WhatCulture.com, take a list chosen by you, yes you the person who is back in their studio after the bright lights and tinsel town effect of Newcastle. Gosh, I wish I had all of those 4K, 8K, 20K, 30K cameras, 40K actually, I should have just said that because the Warhammer, 40K cameras! But now I'm back to this, talking to a webcam and pretending that James is just off to my right here. He's not, believe it or not. Yes, you get to decide what list I dole out to you each and every week. And this week we're talking about video game characters that we utterly hated. Because you know what? It's actually hilarious when you can actually connect to other gamers from all across the world by collectively agreeing how much we utterly loathe certain video game characters. Spitting venom with friends about certain bosses, NPCs or companions who just won't read the bloody room can produce some of the most cathartic and hilarious moments in the industry. And while I personally would never like to badmouth somebody or wish another person harm when it comes to these characters. Hmm. So let's take a look at them. As I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are eight hated video game characters that just wouldn't die. And you know the drill by now, say hi to me here over in the live chat and pop your suggestions for next week's episode down in the comments section below. And with that, let's get on with it, shall we? Number eight, Froggy, Sonic Adventure. Now here's the thing, my utter hatred for Big the Cat from the Sonic the Adventure franchise is pretty well documented at this point in time, so much so that my portfolio of work could probably allow me to run for head of look at this furry f***ing idiot society and then establish myself as a Putin-esque figure that will never be able to leave the position. But maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Because you know what? Maybe my anger is actually misplaced somewhat, because upon taking a step back and looking at this giant ham head, maybe Big here isn't the one that should be catching our ire, as after all, he's only motivated into his utter bollocks inclusion in Sonic Adventure because of his pet idiot Froggy. Thanks to Froggy munching on a Chaos Emerald, we have to endure the utter doldrum fishing experience in Sonic Adventure, and his repeated escapes mean that we have to sit through level after the level of frustratingly willing the little bastard to take a munch on our fishing pole. Without Froggy, as shown in Sonic Heroes, Big the Cat is… well he's still not good by any stretch of the imagination, but he's certainly infinitely more tolerable. But when he's got this little green bastard by his side, oh my god, just harpoon my heart my friend because I am going down with this ship. It is an absolute stinker, so much so that landfills even refuse it entry. Number 7. Lady Comstock, Bioshock Infinite. Right, who ordered lemon juice and salt mix? Was it you? There you go. Thank you very much, thank you. Ah, uh, ah uh, yes, that's the searing pain that one needs to be in when talking about Lady Comstock. Oh god. This spirit soul sucker formed the backbone of the true low point of Bioshock Infinite, presenting a challenge that felt like it was 90% unfair and 10% unfun. Being dragged from her eternal rest, Lady Comstock attacks Booker and Elizabeth with righteous fury, summoning leagues of the undead to battle alongside her. Now on paper this sounds alright, doesn't it? Acting like a ghostbuster with a kind of plasmid powered proton pack to zap the ghost with? That actually sounds pretty decent, sign me up! But that essence of joy dies in the throat of gamers all across the world, and all that comes out is uh, th three times we gotta battle this. Oh, I went really either. <laughs> Yes, trying to put this spirit to rest is an utter chore. For a starter, she is an absolute bullet sponge, which, come to think of it, kind of makes sense. Have you ever tried to shoot a ghost? Yeah, it's probably not going to end that well. Secondly, this causes you to run out of ammo fast, meaning that you'll be salvaging and sobbing as you wait for Elizabeth to throw you a clip or two. And finally, finally, you have to face off against Lady Comstock three times, making her a chore of a boss battle that you just want to end, but utterly refuses to. So let's Lady Comstock, come a bit closer. A little bit closer, please. Come on, that's it. Right up into the grill. Ghost yourself. Number six, the dog duck hunt. Oh. 
Ooh, I forgot I wrote this entry and now I've got to talk about it again. Brilliant. Love talking about the dog from Duck Hunt because he is pretty much the closest thing that I'm going to get to a war flashback. As soon as I think of his smirking face, I get attacked by feelings of inadequacy and failure as, let's be clear on something, the worst thing that you could probably do when somebody doesn't achieve their goals is to quite literally laugh in their face. Kind of builds an unhealthy relationship with failure there, doesn't it? Still, no one told the developers of Duck Hunt and so their pixel pooch is one that revels in your defeat. Now, it's meant to be all charming and light-hearted, but have you seen how hard it is to hit these bloody ducks in the first place? I'm trying my bloody best, mate! It's no wonder that many players snapped and tried to offload a few rounds into this mutt's face. Yet here lies the true villainy of the piece, for you see, the dog is invincible. He just laughs at you, he just points and laughs forever, and you're just, just bang, and just, he just goes, no, and you're bang, and no, and he's just bang, and he's like, no, and you're just like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> he just shrugs off your attacks and continues to point and laugh at your misery. Truly, he is the real god down here, and much like Train Man from The Matrix, this mutt is derailing your good times. Did I actually write a Matrix joke in the year 2021? I mean, I guess... The new one is kind of around the corner. But the train man reference, what was the, what was the thing in there? Number five, wild dog. Time crisis. Okay, so cards on the table. I absolutely adore Wild Dog because, I mean, how can you not love this guy? He's just so over the top. He's utterly insane. He's got the best quips and those weird, like, stick on glasses. I absolutely adore him. However, we do have to accept a few facts here. He is kind of a terrorist. He is a really horrible man, he's killed thousands of people, and kind of threatens the global safety of the entire world pretty much every given Sunday. So yeah, you're meant to hate him. In a kind of like, Borderlands Handsome Jack way, for me at least. Anyway, right, I digress. So yeah, Wild Dog is hated by quite a lot of people who don't get his over-the-top wackiness, and trust me, this guy is whack-a-mole wacky. For starters, he's a mainstay villain who simply refuses to die, appearing over and over in every Time Crisis video game despite seemingly perishing in a fiery explosion in the title prior. Seriously, how does this guy survive all of these explosions? It's like he's got a pact with the bloody devil, right? Well, you know what, friend? That's actually not that far from the truth, because if you ever looked at his Wikipedia page, James, you ever looked at Wild Dog's Wikipedia page? Funnily enough, no. Well, you should definitely check out the Wikipedia page for Wild Dog because it has a very interesting little bit of information down in the miscellaneous section. You see, down there, it explains that not only has he rebuilt his body again and again, becoming a kind of cyborg in the process, but also, and this is the delicious part, so delicious that I'm gonna have beef. Oh. Thank you, Beef Gates. Beef Gates, deliver it on a platter here. Oh, thank you very much, Beef He's escaped from hell itself. That's right, his soul has escaped from hell itself. That is a thing that is in this franchise. That is canon. Amazing. I'm sorry, what? I know that the Time Crisis games are a little bit of banter, but literally escaping from hell itself? How in the blue blazes are you meant to put this dog down when he's acting as bloody Cujo? Number four, Eric Sparrow, Tony Hawk's Underground. Oh no! These were the words that exited my mouth upon realizing that I had just come across the greatest nemesis that I would probably ever make in any video game ever, but unfortunately realizing the fact that because of the genre, I'd never be able to crush him. I'm speaking, of course, about Eric. King Sparrow. The way that Neversoft plonked this absolute rotter into their sports game and in turn created one of the best villains going is something that never fails to amaze me, as I don't think I've ever been this emotionally invested in the story of a skateboarding game since, well, ever. Eric is the worst of us in so many ways. He's a liar, he's a backstabber, and worst of all, he gets away with his utter BS for far too long before he's ultimately caught. For a fair old while, I wasn't sure if there was going to be any comeuppance, and to think that he nearly ruined your life as well as almost costing it several times makes me genuinely wish that he'd taken the big rail grind straight to hell. Number three, Abby. The Last of Us Part Two. Now this entry is going to be a little bit contentious, I imagine, because a lot of people really, really hate Abby. But on the other side, there are a lot of people that praise Naughty Dog for what they did with her in this sequel to a beloved classic video game. 
For me, I kind of sit on the fence as I can see both sides of the argument, but I will explain further And now. I thought that moving the player's focus in such a manner towards Abby was a bold move and one that set up a revenge story for the ages, but to lose Joel in such a horrifying and brutal manner was indeed a gut punch that will take years to recover from. I understand why people hate Abby as she quite literally robbed players of one of their favourite characters and was pretty unlikable throughout her tale, so much so that it was sometimes hard to see her side of the story clearly. Yet this is the point, because once one chooses that path of revenge. They lose a part of their own humanity, that which is connected with empathy and love for your fellow man. You're choosing to basically shut off that side of your life in your quest for bloody vengeance. But it's here that Ellie regains that sliver of the human essence because she spares Abby at the end of things. And while she definitely does not wear a white hat thanks to the trail of bodies behind her, at least she breaks the cycle of violence at the end. Therefore, as much as many players would have wanted Abby to die at the end of this game, it's actually for the betterment of so many others that she is left alive. Number 2. Eazmat Final Fantasy XII Don't you just hate it when boss battles have absolutely zero respect for your real life time? I enjoy a good tussle every once in a while. It's why James Downs and I started the Naked Fireside Wrestling Federation, isn't that right James? Jules mate, I was under the impression that we was keeping that to ourselves. <laughs> you slippery bastard. But I have avocados in the fridge that are about to go off and I really need to be popping off soon. Therefore, can you imagine my annoyance when it came to fighting Yasmat from Final Fantasy XII and realising that, on a good day, this boss battle would take literally hours to grind through? I understand that you're trying to sell this monster as the be-all and end-all Square Enix, but this was akin to chaining me to my console and then slapping me in the face with total party kill moves every 10 minutes or so. What makes this such a loathsome boss battle outside of the outrageous HP pool that you've got to basically grind your way through is that if you don't do damage quick enough, then he basically just goes, I'm sorry, lads. Ah, oh, this one's on me. You were attacking me and I didn't realize. Better heal back up to full and take this seriously. That's right, he heals up to full, the bastard. Thus, Yasmat becomes a truly hated boss battle the more that you were forced to fight it, as the more time you spent trying to beat it down, the more you realised that you were effectively trying to chuck the deck chairs off the Titanic as a disastrous time was headed your way, no matter what you tried doing. And number one, Porky, Mother 3. Now, I feel like an utter monster for saying that I truly loathe a child, but in Porky's case, I'm gonna make a goddamn exception. My feelings for Porky Minch from Mother 3 can be pretty much displayed using the following hand gestures. Porky is the obnoxious neighbour of Ness in Earthbound who grows into becoming the main antagonist of the series come the close of Mother 3. Now, as you can imagine, a rise in villain status of that magnitude across the course of multiple games means that Porky, or Pokey depending on which region you're playing it in, has a lot of time to get under your skin. As a tyrannical king, a desperately angry little boy, and as a pal of the true time-twisting villain of the piece, Porky revels in causing misery for your party, and so your hatred for this hog lump will only grow and grow as the story unfolds. However, in a moment that blasts any possible catharsis out of the window, when you finally do get to confront him for the final time, victory is snatched away from you by Porky! As Porky realises that he's lost and is unable to deal with this, he hops inside his absolutely safe capsule to protect him from harm. The problem is, however, is that the capsule is quite literally safe from anything and everything in existence and can never be opened. And when coupled with the fact that he will stay alive forever means that he is now bound to exist as time around him flickers out and dies. Now, it's a pretty sad ending for a truly hated character, because in this sense, we actually want him to die probably as much as he would want to after, I don't know, a couple of millennia floating in absolute nothingness. You had your chance, Porky, and you blow it. And there we go, those were eight hated video game characters that just wouldn't die. I hope that you enjoyed that, and please let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below, as well as your suggestions for next week's episode. Hope that you enjoyed that, and if you want to chat to me further, you can do so over on Twitter, at RetroJ with a zero, or you can swing by Live and Let's Dice, where I do all of my streaming outside of work, and it'd be great to see you over there, my friends. But before I go, I just want to say one thing. It's never nice to hold on to hatred. Trust me on that one. It's a very exhausting emotion to carry around with you. 
So I urge you, if you have the capacity to forgive people who have wronged you in the past, then I urge you to do so because going out there with love in your heart instead of hate truly is the way to live a healthy and happy life. And that is all that I want from you. All right. So build bridges instead of burning them and treat yourself and your neighbor with love and respect. As always, I've been Jules. You've been awesome. Never forget that. I'll speak to you soon. Bye.